going to be moving on to... Well, Red Comet, which is going to be, I believe, Game 2 between Agent E382 and Filthos. So we will get to that when I manage to join up and get everything set. And once again, I gotta deal with that whole set win counter thing, but whatever. Oh wait, who won last? Shoot, I don't know who won. This is what I mean. Snuggle Base knows what's up. They know how to do this because I don't love. This is a pain in the butt. Okay, fail thoughts. One last game. Cool. So, Thales has one last game and has a single win so first. So far. Okay. Awesome! So, I can now join up and everything should be good. Alright, so we are going to be moving on. I said to. There we go, perfect. I can do manual editing! Hooray! And so yeah. Oh! It looks like Agent E382 started out in the cheese position at the northwest side of the map. So for those of you not familiar, this map you normally start out on the west side, either usually southwest, sometimes center west, but never northwest. Northwest is you expect your opponent to start northeast and you want to cheese them out. That's how it works. Yeah, I think there is... um. A lot of people do choose that spot, but it's not, not you are choosing to start at a close position or it's not working out for him at all, he's getting his masons sniped out. Yeah. Hmm. But I mean, it does give you three metal extractors behind your um factory. Yeah, and like I said, it gets you a shorter rush distance, but it looks like that didn't really pan out. Only one dart was sent in that hasn't been reclaimed so far. So Felthos basically able to completely get rid of whatever rush may have happened. Assuming that Agent E382 even went for a rush, I don't know that they did. I'm not sure that they actually were intending to do this. I'd have to check their record, but I think they might be a team player. I don't. Their name is not familiar. I have not seen them play a whole lot of 1v1, so I'm guessing they're more of a team player. And they're probably used to the way that in 3v3s or higher, you would start in that spot. Someone would start in the northwest because there's room. Like someone's staying in the southwest and center. It, it's tempting to start north because you have these two defensible entrances and you just need to defend one and the other and you have three mexes or even five where the other one you're very starting very wide open but the three starting mexes are much closer together so they're easier to defend and that's the difference between the two starts really mm -hmm. so that is well it looks like that didn't really pan out and that's probably going to mean death for fail to us i for agent 3a2 because agent 3a2 they've got really not much to go on i don't think Unless I'm missing he's, something. He's it's pushing good. HLTs down the map, which is an interesting strategy. He's um, also morphed his commander with, uh, what has he got? A beam laser and a nano lathe. So Which we'll see whether that pays off. He's running, stalling on energy right now, though, so he's not building at full speed. Yeah, that rating actually didn't... Well, that rating touched a couple of the wind generators, but these wind gens are not the most reliable. Still, yeah, I don't really... It's just, this area is risky. I mean, yeah, it's two defensible expansions, but it's also two areas that your opponent can just pincer you in. And Failthos yeah, knows how to do that. He, he lost his HLT, which he's trying to put into four position there, because he didn't put it on high priority. His factory was still drawing half of his resources, so it's something you've got to be sort of scared of. And he has idle constructors sitting outside his factory right now that he needs to be pulling it back and uh, expanding behind him and taking the reclaim that was left there. Yeah, and it He's looks building like... two hedge LDs next to each other. He's basically conceding so much territory by doing this. Yeah, not to mention, there's actually... If you notice the build orders, they have sent one of their workers around the back to do that. But the way their build orders have been working, they've been kind of going around the back and then one around the front as well. Which doesn't mm -hmm. work especially well. Oh, the sound seems low, really? That's strange. Hmm. Sorry, I feel like it's telling me the sound seems a bit low. Not sure why. I got it pretty high up. But I might. Uh, look anyway, at that. For, the, for the game, this is um this is a classic. You can see, I think, Shadow Fury's 
you're completely right by saying he's a team player here. The strategy he's pulling here is to defend a very narrow and narrow alley and to move forwards in a line with his commander towards his opponent. To morph his commander, take up to half the map. He's actually a good team player. He's taking up to half the map. He's putting HLTs at about half the map so that he's contesting at least 50% of the territory. He's just forgetting that there's also like another access to this game you know it's, it's, it's two-dimensional it's not one-dimensional you can't just fight along a line yes. and this is exactly what's happening right now he's having all these scorches come around the side and take out all his economy there he can't afford to, to yeah it, it, it fortunately you Ooh. well we see what levelers do wow yeah, that, was type counters. <laughs> that was a hell of a thing that's what type that's, counters are for <laughs> holy crap yeah i mean levelers really do do their job right so that was that was a good demonstration of how type counters work in this game. How the Riot Raider, ra or the Riot Raider and Skirmisher system works. But at the same time, I mean, Fail Thoughts has taken half the map. And mm. E3A2 is getting very behind. Like, they're remarkably behind. They're about, it looks like a third, <laughs> a little over a third in terms of economy. They've just now started expanding around the back. or gotten one expansion around the back. Like their defensible expansions they haven't taken. They've they're playing very risky and they do not have the military to support this. And it's I do not agree with the Stingers. No one built mm. Stingers in 1v1. Just as a point of reference, Stingers are not built until maybe mid-game 1v1 when you already have the territory. Otherwise, yeah. lotuses. I think building them forward, um he's building a Stardust in his back right now in a position where he probably shouldn't build a Stardust. Yeah. Yeah, one of the reasons you don't build stingers because they're so vulnerable to raiders. I mean, that wasn't up quite quite yet, but you only would have lost one or two raiders there anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you, you can build a stinger and rush it towards the center. You might build one with your sort of commander nest. Often it's more common to build a nest of defenders rather than that. But you can afford to build maybe one stinger, but yeah, it's, it's too... You need to build it towards the center of the map where you can then raid to the north and the south. You can't afford to just march in one direction towards the enemy, meet them at halfway, and then not take the rest of the territory around the south. Yeah, so that... Well, that's what we see what we see. I mean... Yeah, yeah, but the... we, there's, he's coming in with the tech right now, which might, you know, clean up a little... But, um, yeah, there's a... There's, fail versus his army's out of position, so he might be able to do some damage for this, but, uh... Yeah, it's about how much... Okay, how much damage he does with the very limited force at this point. Yeah, he's just losing it to LSC. No, that's that I think is it. I don't see like at this point, Fail Thoughts has enough of an army, they can just march over three E three A two's base. I don't know if Fail Thoughts is Definitely. aware about what E three A two has. They should be. They have enough radar to know that E three A two does not have anything around the back. They're basically entirely in the northwest and that's it. He's making a Goliath. He's going for a flashy finish. <laughs> yeah. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, this is this is over. He wants to be impressive. He wants to be impressive and make a Goliath and bust in there just, just to show what he's capable of. Yeah. Um, don't have to wait for 20 seconds given the economy they have. Sheesh. Plus 75 yeah, he, metal. Again, priorities. He should be using priorities or um, at least assisting one factory over the other. But um, you can see that... Um, Agent is morphing, so he's really having a very commander centric, very sort of make a nest. He's making a nest with, you know, an Aegis and what have you. This is something that a team, a team, a team player would do yeah. is that they build an, a nest, and then when they start getting hit by artillery, their response is to build defensively, to build a shield generator there so that to defend the artillery. And that's what shield generators are for. It's a good move. Only one versus one player's response, the correct response, is to get some raiders and go kill the artillery or some assault units if, if it's defended, you know, and just go in yeah. there and kill it. Or go around. Here comes the Goliath in now. This will be interesting. A Goliath in one versus one. Yeah, well, this comes up actually quite often. It just doesn't come up 10 minutes into the game. <laughs> Not that often. Although it, well, should be able to deal with everything here. So I, yeah, this is game. This is game out with style. 3 2 is not... E three two is not hauling the towel though. They are they're still going for it. The Goliath is only is oh, a half he's, health. He's targeting incorrectly though. He's, he's targeting in such a way that he's shifting his fire. He might get stunned. <laughs> Ooh, I don't think so. No, that's yeah, definitely no. not going to happen now. The Goliath is taking a lot of damage. They're not invulnerable. Yeah, and E three two forced to push back while at the same time there's just. 
an attack going along the sides, tearing right everything else, the Stardust and the Faraday over to the northwest, only being a minor nuisance at worst. Now that all the Ravagers have come in, that's, okay, that's game, that's it. Game, set, and match. Gonna have to move on to the next series whenever I can find whatever that is. Because yeah, I think I think over. you saw some some of the, me the mentalities of when you're shifting from uh, team play to one versus one play. That's how you need to really change your thinking about um, how how you position yourself, just how you consider the map. Because you know, often one team players play in lanes where they're fighting, you know, down the map. Or on a map like this, you'd have two or three players, and they could afford to just walk in a straight line with their commanders, be very commander focused, mm -hmm. which is why you see the morph morphing. It's I mean, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, the commander goes boom. It's not a bad thing to be commander focused in team games because you're really just marching down a lane and you need a strong commander to continue that push. Whereas in one versus one, you often march with your commander to a specific spot. Yeah, usually the center west. or on this map, that cluster of mechs is. If you're in the, if you're on mm. the west side, the south side, and if you're on the east side, then it's the north cluster. That's where you mm. march to. That's where the defender nests are always built. Yep. But not, not above that point specifically. Yep. The reason it's better to take the center is because it just allows you to project force up and down mm -hmm. from that position. Whereas if you take a side, you, you have to project force all to the bottom of the map. It requires so much more effort. If the enemy tries to raid, they have to raid around you, so you split their force. Yep. Okay, anyway, I'm just going to restart the stream for a sec and mm -hmm. be back. So stay tuned. Be back in just a moment.